Chapter 5 Sammy Littletail Digs a Burrow Sammy Littletail found that his leg was quite well enough to walk on without the corn stalk crutch. So the day after his papa's picture had been taken, the little rabbit boy started to leave the burrow. Come on, Juicy, he called to his sister. I will also go with you, said Uncle Wiggily Longears. I will give you children a few lessons in digging burrows. It is time you learned, for some day you will want an underground house of your own. So he led them to a nice place in the big park on the top of the mountain where the earth was soft and showed Sammy and Susie how to hollow out rooms and halls, how to make back and front doors and many other things a rabbit should know. I think that will be enough of a lesson today, said Uncle Lo Wiggily Longears after a while. We will go home now. No, spoke Sammy. I want to dig some more. It's lots of fun. You had better come with us, remarked Susie. But Sammy would not, though he promised to be home before dark. So while Uncle Wiggily Longears and Susie Littletail started off, Sammy continued to dig. He dug, and he dug, and he dug, until he was a long distance underground, and it really made quite a fine burrow for a little rabbit. All at once he felt a sharp pain in his left foreleg. Ow! she cried. Who did that? I did, answered a little furry creature, all curled up in a hole in the ground. What do you mean by digging into my house? Can't you see where you're going? Of course, answered Sammy as he looked at his sore leg. But couldn't you see me coming and tell me to stop? No, I can't see you, was the reply. Why not? Because I'm blind. I'm a mole and I can't see, but I get along just as well as if I did. Now I suppose I've got to go to work and mend the hole you made in the side of my parlor. It's a very large one. The mole you see lived underground just as the rabbits did, only in a smaller house. I'm very sorry, said Sammy. That doesn't do much good, spoke the mole as she began to stop up the hole Sammy had made. She really did very well for a blind animal, but then she had been blind so long that she did not know what daylight looked like. You had better dig in some other place, the mole concluded as she finished stopping up the hole. Sammy thought so himself and did so. He went quite deep and when he thought he was far enough down he began digging upward so as to come out and make a back door, as his uncle had taught him to do. He dug, and he dug, and he dug. All at once, his feet burst through the soft soil, and he found that he had come out on top of the ground. But what a funny place he was in! It was not at all like the part of the park where his, near his burrow, and he was a little frightened. There were many tall trees about, and in one was a big gray squirrel who sat up and chattered at the sight of Sammy, as he had never seen a rabbit before. What are you doing here? asked the squirrel. Don't you know rabbits are not allowed here? Why not? asked Sammy. Because there are nice trees about, and the keepers of the park fear you, and your family will gnaw the bark off and spoil them. We never spoil trees, declared Sammy, though he just then remembered that his Uncle Wiggily Longears had once said something about apple tree bark being very good to eat. There's another reason, went on the squirrel, chattering away. What is it? asked Sammy. Look, go over there and you'll see, was the reply. And when Sammy looked with his little body half out of the hole he had made, he saw a great animal with long horns coming straight at him. He tried to run back down the hole, but he found he had not made it large enough to turn around in. So Sammy Littletail, frightened as 
he was that the dreadful animal had to jump out of the burrow to get ready to run down it again. And just as he did so, the big animal cried out to him, Hold on there! Sammy shook with fright and did not dare move. But after all, the big animal did not intend to harm him. And what happened? And who the big animal was? I will tell you tomorrow night.